One Pentecost Sunday, I was visiting with people outside the church after Mass, and someone came up to me and said, Father, you look good in red. It brings out the red in your beard. Oh, okay, thank you. And they said, but what made you choose to wear red today? And I said, well, that's the color of Pentecost. I didn't choose to wear red. That's the color of Pentecost. I realized maybe not everyone understands that uh, there's all these liturgical colors. The priest doesn't have any choice on what those colors are, um, but they have a particular significance. And the church has been using these colors for centuries, for millennia in some cases. And so I thought I would make a little video on why do we wear these colors? What do they mean? How does a priest get ready for mass when he's getting dressed in those vestments? And what does it matter for everybody else? Liturgical colors are the colors that we wear during liturgy are green, red, white, violet, rose, and black. So I'm gonna say a little word about each one of those colors just to recognize and to acknowledge that there is a meaning to each one of these. There's a purpose to each color. So we wear green for the majority of the year. We wear it during what we call ordinary time. Green should be a reminder for us very naturally of just a beautiful springtime outside. You got green grass, you got green trees. Uh, green is a sign of a, a healthy growing plant, right? And so in a way, as, as we come to Mass during ordinary time, it's a season where we're, we're reading really through the, the bulk of the Gospels. We're getting the, the life of Christ, his public ministry. We're listening to his teachings. And it's a time of, of that day-to-day -day walking with Jesus. It's that uh, time of ordinary growth. And so green is that sign of uh, that invitation to call to grow spiritually. Red is both a symbol of the Holy Spirit and of blood. So you'll see it worn on Pentecost Sunday, for example, or you might see it worn on a confirmation mass when the bishop comes to confirm all the kids in the parish and give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. You'll also find red worn in association with Jesus's passion or the, the death of martyrs. So they've, they've shed their blood. Uh, so for Christ, he's, he's offering his life for the salvation of the world. So we, we honor that with that red color. Um, or the martyrs who've united their sufferings with Christ by shedding their blood or, or laying down their life for him and with him. White is usually worn as a sign of victory, so you'll see it worn throughout the Easter season as a reminder of Christ's victory over death. Uh, you'll see it associated with the saints who weren't martyrs, so maybe they were, uh, they just lived a, a good, long, holy life, uh, or they died of, of some illness in the course of their life, but they, they weren't killed for their faith or something. So white is this sign of victory. So we even often wear it at funerals uh, as a reminder of the hope that we have, that we, if we're united to Jesus in his death, then we're also united to Jesus in eternal life. Violet is especially interesting because it's got this symbolism of royalty associated with it. And it, it goes way back to um, the time of the Phoenicians, which would now be considered uh, Lebanon. Uh, the Phoenicians had uh, found that there's a particular sea snail that if, if you, could, you could extract from it uh, drops of this dye, uh, that you could use to color fabrics and that sort of thing. And it, it was a purple color. Uh, and so it became known as Tyrian purple because it was associated with the city of Tyre. So you'll know if, if you look at history that Julius Caesar, for example, he wore a purple toga. It was colored with this uh, particular dye that came from these sea snails. But because it was so hard to harvest, it was hard to, to get enough of this dye to color particular things, it was very expensive. And therefore it was very rare. Uh, therefore, it was associated usually with those who had wealth or those who had uh, power or royalty or something like that. And so you'll find that the Caesars often uh, wore it in, as their ceremonial dress. Uh, you'll find that the, the Byzantine emperors wore it all the way into the Middle Ages. And so the, the priest uh, wears purple, or it's the liturgical color of a couple of seasons, Advent and Lent, because it's a reminder for us that Jesus is king. He is royalty. He's the one that we bow down to. And so it's, it's just a reminder that he has been clothed with the royal dignity of a king because he's the king of the universe. Rose is worn as kind of a sign of joy uh, in the midst of a, an otherwise uh, preparatory season. So Advent is a season of preparation for Christmas. Lent is a season in preparation for Easter. And both of those seasons, we're typically wearing purple, but on, there's two days, one in each of those seasons, where we wear pink as just a sign of hope, as a sign
sign of joy in the midst of that preparation, uh, we're, we're already looking towards uh, the fullness of joy that's to come on Christmas or Easter. Black might not actually be worn that often by priests that you've seen. Uh, it's, it's just not that common because it's, it's usually a very optional color. It's never required of the priest to be uh, wearing a black vestment, uh, but it's usually associated with death. So it might be worn at a funeral, for example, it might be worn on All Souls Day. Um, there's a, a symbolism there of, of just entering into the sorrow uh, as Jesus has entered into the depths of our humanity and he's even entered into hell for us. I have an entirely different video on why the priest wears the Roman collar and in that video I talk a lot about the importance of the color black uh, as it's a sign of solidarity with those who are poor, those who are suffering. It's uh, again that symbol of entering into the depths of sorrow with the Lord who has entered into those depths with us. The liturgical colors are important because they can clue us into what's going on in this Mass. They can give us a little hint of maybe a theme that we're about to experience. So if you showed up at daily Mass at your parish and uh, the priest comes down the aisle wearing red, then you're already clued into the fact that, okay, this is going to be a day that in some way probably remembers a martyr. And so uh, there's themes that go with that, of course, right? That following Christ means giving him everything. And that might at some point mean that I'm invited to even lay down my life with him, to suffer with Christ. Or maybe you see the priest is wearing white. So it's a reminder that there's a theme, probably in today's Mass, of victory or Christ's victory over death or the, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. When the priest puts on these vestments, uh, there's an entire ceremony around that. There's prayers associated with it, um, and there's, there's several things the priest has to put on. So I thought it'd be interesting just to, to maybe outline for a moment a little bit of the steps that a priest goes through to get ready to celebrate Mass. First, he shows up in the sacristy, and uh, he grabs probably the amice first. This, the amice is this cloth that goes uh, over his um, uh, collar. To, it, it hides the, the Roman collar or whatever his ordinary clothing is. And there's a prayer associated with it that goes like this. Lord, set the helmet of salvation on my head to fend off all the assaults of the devil. The priest then puts on the alb. The alb is this white garment that covers just about his entire body. And it's a reminder that the priest was baptized at one time. And when he was baptized, he was clothed with a white garment. Uh, we've been washed white in the blood of the lambs. We've been made new. We've been clothed with Jesus Christ. And the priest then puts on a cincture. Uh, that cincture is a, a reminder that the priest is called to a life of chastity. And the prayer that is associated with that goes like this. Gird me, O Lord, with the cincture of purity and extinguish my fleshly desires that the virtue of continence and chastity may abide within me. The priest then puts on a stole, which looks like a cloth that just goes over the, the shoulders and, and drapes over him. It's a bit of a reminder of uh, Jesus, the good shepherd, picking up the, the lamb and throwing it over his shoulders, that lost sheep, and he's bringing it back home. And uh, so it's a, a sign of the, the authority and the responsibility that the priest has for the flock, for the sheep. And then the priest puts on this chasuble, this, this big garment uh, that uh, is usually somewhat beautiful. It's nice to look at. It's a, a reminder in a way of, of Christ's priesthood, which is bigger and more beautiful than anything that any human being could ever make. And uh, so the, the priest is just a human being, but he's been clothed with Christ. And that uh, symbol is really that outer garment. And the, uh, the prayer that's associated with the chasuble goes like this. O Lord, who has said, my yoke is sweet and my burden light, grant that I may so carry it as to merit thy grace. It's interesting to note that it takes time for the priest to get ready for Mass. It's not just, you can't just storm in the back door and just walk straight up to the sanctuary and, and start Mass. That there's actually this transition period, really, of, of having to slow down and, and get vested to get ready for Mass. Um, there's a sense of kind of closing out, leaving behind the busy life that, that we were just in immersed in and stepping into a new time we're stepping into a new space and in a way it's also a reminder for me at least that I'm merely an instrument right I'm putting on these vestments and they completely cover all of the normal clothes that are associated with me and my personality when I'm putting on those vestments at mass it doesn't matter who Scott Bailey is. Uh, what matters is that Christ is present in this liturgy. My job when I show up at the Mass is not to give you myself. My job is to give you Jesus and Jesus' words and Jesus' will and Jesus' sacrifice on the altar. My job in that moment is to decrease so that Christ can increase. So that's why my, my normal clothing is covered so that you can be reminded that Jesus is the priest here. Jesus is the true priest who stepped into this Mass to offer himself for us. 
And maybe this is the takeaway in all of this. We are supposed to be clothed with Christ, not with ourselves. And that's a real tension in this world, right? I'm always tempted to put myself first, to decide what I want, or to put my, my wishes and my preferences first. That's always going to be a tension. But God has a better plan. God has made me for a reason. God has me here today for a reason. God's got a will for my life, and he's got a will for my day. What matters is what he wants for my life. I don't get to decide what's right and what's wrong. I don't get to decide what holiness looks like, but he does. He shows me what holiness looks like. He shows me what right is, what wrong is, what good is, what bad is. He sets the standard that I am called to to live out. The priest doesn't choose what color he wears for mass because the priest is not the Lord of his own life. The same goes for all of us. We've been clothed with Christ in our baptism. We are called to decrease and he's supposed to increase in our life because he is Lord of the universe and not us. God bless you.